How you doing, folks? This is Rex Guy of the Buckeye Nest, and I'm back here with part two on how to build your computer. My wife is a little aggravated at me right now because I'm sitting down here making this movie and uh, building this computer, and she wanted some chalupas from Taco Bell, but unfortunately I told her I'm going to be here most of the night, so no tacos tonight or chalupas. But anyway, I still love you, honey. Okay, let's get on with this custom build we're talking about here. While I was uploading all this stuff and taking a short break there, I did a little more preparation on the computer, but let's talk about organization in a second. Remember that motherboard box I showed you that the motherboard come in? Well, I never throw those out, and I save them because I put all the setup software and all the instructions that comes with the, with the customer's computer all the extra parts like this setup CD for the motherboard that I'm going to show you here in a minute and the manuals which I don't need anymore but you may uh, and extra cables and things of that nature into that box and then I, I give them to my client and they store it and that way they got all the setup software in one spot that they need to uh, finish the setup on the computer and then they uh, put that away and then they know not to throw it away okay now, while, as I said, you, while I was setting up this movie and publishing it and stuff, I did a little more work on our computer here. And let me show you what I did. Making noise back here, tearing things up. Okay. Let's set this thing up here so you can see a little more of what I did. And I'm going to pull this camera down here a little bit closer so you can see better what I've done here on the inside. Okay. I prepped the case and in order to finish prepping it and mount this motherboard. Remember I told you you had to pull that back panel out of there? Well, if you look here, I got that back panel in there now that came with the motherboard. And that just pushes in and, and uh, pulls out real easy. But I want to warn you, while you're doing that, be very, very, very careful. you got to remember, you're working with aluminum here. And this is razor sharp aluminum, especially around in this area. So you want to be very, very, very careful because you can cut yourself pretty bad and you can cut yourself pretty deep and not even realize that you've done that until after you uh, have uh, fluid coming out of your body which I won't say because it might upset some of you uh, all over the place so be very very careful got to have a cup a sip of coffee here then I put that back panel in this case as you can see here and then let's look on the inside of the case. Let me see if I can get my camera cable up here a little better. Yeah, it's not very long. Okay. Yeah, let's look on the inside of this case a minute. Okay. I got the motherboard mounted. Now let me show you something here. You're going to need a hex driver to fit this tiny little screw right here. Now what happens is you take about six of these. And you line your motherboard up on the inside of that case after you put that panel in. And underneath of them here, where they're mounted, let me give you some light here. You see this screw right here, where it's mounted? you got to put those hex uh, nuts underneath of this motherboard and screw them into the case with a hex uh, driver. And this is what I'm talking about here, about the hex driver. You see that thing right there? Am I too close to you here? I might be. There we go. That's a special a special driver, screwdriver there. And that fits down over top of that special screw. And then you put those screws in the case there with the, in the uh, case itself. You tighten that motherboard down. But before you do that, <clears throat> you want to do a couple other little things here. You want to put the processor in. And that only goes in one certain way. You can't make a mistake. And the processor's underneath this fan right here. 
and this condenser. Now this this pro this condenser and the fan came with some what's called thermal paste, and you got different kinds of it. Here's a tube of it right here, and then uh, you got different kinds of it. I got another tube of it here. But as I said, the machine came with the thermal paste already, but it never hurts to put just another little dab of thermal paste on that. And what does the thermal paste do? It helps draw the heat off the top of this condenser in here, this processor in here, and it draws the heat out, which that fan draws out, and ships it out that side panel that I showed you in the earlier movie to that little tunnel. So you put that, that processor in there, you... you, you uh, mount that down tight and your manual which you're going to put in your uh, motherboard box shows you how to do that and it's real simple and once again there's no way to make a mess with uh, make a mistake with that processor because it only fits in on, on this socket in one way then you put a little more thermal paste on it then you take this this fan right here and it's very simple it's got a couple of connectors on the side of it and once you get a look at it you'll see what I'm talking about you put your hook both hooks on this on this uh, over this processor this connection here and then this black thing right here this black lever you push it down and it tightens that processor down on top of that now since I've been doing these computer builds all these years I'm pretty confident in myself but I did run a boot test and we are booting up which is a good thing so this is the basic computer set up right now all we're going to add to it now is, is up in these drives here, we're going to add a, a DVD burner. And down here, we're going to mount the uh, hard drive in this area here. And then we'll install the software, plug in uh, the connectors on, this, on the hard drive and the uh, uh, DVD burner. These are called SATA connections. We'll plug them in there. And then we'll boot the machine up and start adding the software. So it's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to take a short break here and turn around and restructure this camera so we can see a little better and I'm going to start putting in the other stuff and we'll have a, a part three and a part four maybe with this machine so bear with me I'll be back in a few minutes how you doing folks this is Rex at the Buckeye Nest and I'm back and I got a little bit of a different camera here now so we're going to be able to point out things a little better to you while I was gone, I installed that DVD burner for you. And I'm going to turn on my... Here we go. We've got better lighting now. My uh, overhead light here. And you can see that DVD burner installed right there. It has a SATA connection. You can see that uh, it's a different type of connection than an IDE. IDE connectors all have uh, little chrome pins in them or gold pins in them. Uh, these are all, like I said, L-shaped connectors talk a little bit more about the motherboard and how I installed it I almost forgot to mention to you this connector right here that you're looking at is a graphics card uh, internal graphics card connector and you can see that right there my finger is too big but this is it right here you'll plug that in this is a 24 pin connector uh, for the motherboard itself and, and most of them come with either 20 or 24 uh, this one here means it needs a little more power, so it's got that extra set of pins on it. It was really neat. The motherboard came with this little speaker. This is called a piezo speaker, but what it does is when the machine's booting up, it sends out a series of beeps, and it can tell you, uh, and if you know what those beeps mean, it can tell you what's going on with the boot-up process. Uh, as I said earlier, this slot right here is for a PCIe 16 video card. You could add a, a higher end video card into it. And I'm going to turn around here and show you my computer and my shop computer. And that's what I'm talking about by that higher end video card, which I got one in this, in this computer here. And you'll see I've got a, a much bigger fan in this machine over here than I have in this new one we're building. And uh, I even have... Uh, on the front of that, you'll see those LED readouts for uh, con fan controllers and, and uh, temperature gauges and shutdown temperatures and, and all kinds of neat things that my, my shop computer can do that uh, this one could do, but I didn't purchase the hardware for it. So, given all that, let me plug this, stop this movie for a minute and plug this thing up 
and we'll show you that we have boots. Okay, we're getting ready to turn this machine on so you can see that it boots, and contrary to popular belief, you don't have to have a hard drive mounted in it or anything else. As a matter of fact, I don't even have any cables plugged up to this DVD burner up here yet, but this monitor over here is the one that's plugged into this computer right now. So let me push the button, and you can see what happens when you boot up a very basic computer. Notice down here, I don't know if you can see it, the little green light, that means the, the machine is booting up, and there you go. And it comes up to this screen, and because i got nothing else installed in it, no hard drive, no operating system or anything like that, it tells me disk boot failure, insert system disk, and press enter. Well, because we don't have the hard drive mounted in it yet, which is this thing here, and I'm going to end up putting that right down in this area here, and then we don't have the operating system installed on it, which is Windows 7, Home Premium, it's not going to complete the boot process. But we have successfully built your very basic computer, and we do know this thing is going to boot once I finish the install on it. So I'm going to shut down this camera here a minute, and, and, and uh, then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, folks. I got the back panel all tightened up again. I got the, the DVD burner all tightened up. Keeping in mind, I got four screws in it, so we don't end up with any extra screws. I got the hard drive mounted in there tight and sturdy, and that also has four screws in it. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going to plug up the SATA cables. SATA connections are much faster than IDE connections, and I keep throwing these things on the floor here, so, so uh, bear with me a second. But what we're going to do now is, is we're going to take and we're going to plug one end of this cable into this DVD burner up here. Let me tilt it up here so you can see it, and uh, you can take a look at this cable. If you look real hard, you can see that it's got an L shape on it. And let's see if I can get it focused. There we go. And it only plugs in one way. You can't plug it in any other way. So bear with me a second while I shut down this camera and plug this thing in. It takes two hands to do this. Okay, you can see I got that cable plugged into the back of that DVD panel. Now, believe it or not, this is the data cable. It's not the power cable. I'll show you the power cable here in a minute. And we're going to take this other end and plug it in down here in this port right here. That's the SATA port. See, it plugs in there pretty simple. Now, bear with me another minute or two here, and I'm going to hook up this cable here to the uh, hard drive. Okay, now I got the SATA cable hooked up to the hard drive. That's the data cable, and I've got this data cable. I'm sorry, that's the, the uh, DVD burner up here. And I got this SATA cable hooked up to this one terabyte size hard drive. Remember what I told you a terabyte is? It's one trillion bits. So you could actually put one trillion ink pens on that hard drive if you want to. Now let's plug up the power sources. These again are, are uh, an L-shaped connector, but they're black, and you'll know that they're the power source because they're coming out of the power supply on cables up here. And this particular machine only offers two connections, and I hope they'll stretch, but let's see. Well, we did run into a minor glitch. The distance between the DVD burner and the hard drive is too far for these connections to stretch. So I'm going to have to take and move that DVD burner down a, uh, probably another notch or two here. So bear with me for a few moments. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see up here, we got this DVD burner moved down another slot. So these connectors, these... Uh, SATA connectors should stretch by now. But I wanted to point out something else here to you. You see this big open hole here in the front? Well, when we bought this computer, that was this piece was already removed. And if you remember, that's where I had that DVD burner sitting. But because I had to remount this, I had to remove this piece from the inside. And it's a simple twist and pull type thing. It's mounted in there, but once again, be careful. These things are made of very razor sharp aluminum and when you start pulling and pushing on them you could cut yourself real bad. Now <clears throat> I had to pull out this black cover and I had already put one away 
But we look here and we see this black cover has this little piece right here, this indentation. So what we're going to do with this black cover is, is we're going to push this back in there and I'll be back. Back in there and covered up that hole with that panel that was made for it there. So you can see we got our DVD burner in there now and everything looks real pretty and real nice. So I'm going to turn it around here on this side and I'm going to see if I can get these uh, power source cables to stretch. And that one goes in there nicely. And now because we made that little room there, this one here is going to stretch pretty nice. Okay, we got the we got the basic setup of the computer done. We got all the cables uh, uh, set up on it here. All the SATA cables are plugged in. These are uh, Molar p connectors for power sources. They're plugged in. You hear my phone ringing. That's probably my wife. Yep, that was my wife. She wants chalupas, beef beef burger chalupas on my way home. So I guess I'm gonna have to stop and get those. But right now, at this very moment. We're ready to plug the com this computer in and start installing the software. So let's do a little check checkpoint here. Let's get some light on so you can see. I told you all about this motherboard. That's the CMOS battery. That's what keeps all your data in, uh, in memory when uh, the computer shut down. This is your graphics processor chip here. Way back in the day, this used to be the math coprocessor and probably still is. This slot here is for an uh, add-in PCIe 16 uh, video card, and I showed you that earlier. This is your uh, processor fan and condenser underneath, and, uh, under the fan, and then underneath the condenser is the CPU, which is a uh, AMD FX 4100 quad-core processor, 3.6 gigahertz. Up here is your DVD burner, and this is your one terabyte hard drive. And this is what's called a piezo speaker, and it makes all kinds of uh, noises that only technicians really know what, what they are when uh, uh, it starts booting up. It tells us whether it's booting up properly or not. On the back up here is what's called PS2 connections for your keyboard and your mouse. And then there's a VGA connection. This motherboard has DVI capability, and so you would need a DVI adapter for that. Here's your USB ports here. You've got four of them. This is an Ethernet connection, and this is your onboard audio. So, let me shut this camera down a minute and plug the rest of this up, and let's see what happens. Okay, this is what we're going to do next. we got all the cables plugged back up and everything. <coughs> I'm going to put this keyboard down here in my lap. Because you have to be quick on the trigger finger here, so to speak, because when I push this button, I'm going to need to hit the proper key on this keyboard to set up the boot sequence right now. Because right now, I want to be able to put this Windows 7 CD in here, and then when the machine reboots, Windows 7 will start loading on that hard drive that I told you about right there. So, let's see what happens here. We've got, we got boot. Here comes the monitor. I gotta hit the delete key, I believe. Ooh, see, see here on the screen, I was a little too fast. It would have booted from that CD uh, had I not been too hasty with that. So you can you can take that and make a note in there. Sometimes the, the system will, the system motherboard will boot and automatically it recognize the DVD burner. You know, it was ready to install it, and then sometimes it won't. Sometimes you have to hit the delete key or the F1 key or the or the F12 key, boot the system, and then set it up for what's called a boot order, in which case I would have shut down uh, the hard drive and just had the uh, DVD burner to set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the button here on the front, and I'm going to reboot this machine. Watch this over here. It's shut down. Now we pushed it again, we boot it back up. 
and that screen's going to come up again. There we go. There's the boot utility screen, and it's going to ask me to boot from CD or DVD. Huh. All right. Let's try it again. I didn't get it done fast enough. Let's try it again. I got to get really quick here with this enter key. What you're doing is you're pressing the enter key and I'm going to start doing that now. So maybe it will boot. There it goes, maybe. No, not. Crap. All right. Excuse my French or German or poor English or whatever else you want to call it, but it's stuck in a continuous boot process and we got to shut that down now. So now I'm going to have to pay attention here on this boot screen and see what keys I got to push. Boot menu is F12. BIOS and setup is delete. Okay. Let's do the boot menu. See, I'm pressing F12. Now it's going. Now let's go to the CD-ROM. Hit that. Okay, this is the first screen of the operating system install. And you can see that we're going to set up Windows uh, here. And all I got to do is just hit the key here and move on. It's loading files. And because this is Windows 7, it does have a, a couple of service packs to load and uh, things of this nature and set itself up here might take a little while so we're not going to go through the whole process but basically what you're going to do from this point is is you're going to follow the prompts on the screen right now it's telling you Windows is loading files which is doing it all on its own but then you're going to it's going to pop up here and tell you to do certain things and you're just going to read those things and do them as it tells you to do and I'll be back in a few minutes and you can see here on the screen the computer screen here that it's starting up Windows for the first time and I'm kind of excited because this this uh, computer I'm putting together here blows everything out of the water that we got in the computer lab here, even mine. Mine's about eight years old, and it's just a dual-core processor, but I got another dual-core processor over here for sale. We got a couple of laptops, and you can see some computer hardware sitting on those tables back there. But no computer in this shop is as good as the one that I'm putting together here. Maybe we'll get rich enough one of these days to be able to afford a new upgrade for ourselves. So let's turn around back here and look. What I'm going to do here on the inside uh, uh, for future references is I'm going to take all these wires. And I've got some special cabling up here. You see those black tubes up there hanging out for different things? I'm going to cover up all those wires and uh, make them look prettier. And then I'm going to set it up so we get a better airflow through here. I'm going to add a couple of fans. I'm going to put a fan there and a fan back up here. I got some extra fans here in the, in the shop. And then uh, finish installing this operating system over here. As you can see, Windows 7 is trying to load and it's prompting us for certain things. Uh, right here it's asking for the language, which is English. And then the keyboard input is US. That's all pretty standard. You can just click on Next. And now it comes to this and it says install now. So we're going to click on that. And it says setup is starting. And we're looking at this thing here. See the, the mouse moving there. Anytime you see that little thing moving on the screen like that, that means your computer's thinking. And one of the things you don't want to do is start doing a whole bunch of clicking. Because if you start doing a whole bunch of clicking, then you're going to have a problem. Well, now look at that. On my, my camera's detecting black things. Anyway, let's click on this. 
you accept the license terms you have to and then up here you're going to do a custom advanced and you're going to click on when it gets to this screen this is telling you it's got 931.5 gigabytes of uh, storage space left because uh, Windows takes up some space and sets up uh, uh, another partition on your hard drive so it can put software in there you're going to click on this drive options and you're going to click uh, delete well you don't need to delete now you're going to click new and you're going to click on add you're actually increasing the size of that partition and then it's going to do this you see that cursor thinking there it's created the position of the partition if you see this one here it's got a hundred megabytes reserved for the system storage while it's doing things so now we're going to click on next and you can see here that Windows is copying Windows files and then it'll expand those files it'll start installing features and it'll go up on the internet if I plug in the cable give me That's a second weird. I'm looking at this screen it's flashing a black line across there but it's not doing it on my monitor but it's doing it on my camera huh anybody knows what that problem is caused by let me know give me a call 216-266-0479 I've never seen that before so I got that internet cable plugged in and it's going to go up on the internet and it's going to install features and it's going to install updates and then it's going to complete the installation and you can see right now it's already copied all the files it needs but now it's going to start expanding those files and it's at 0% for that. So I'm going to shut this camera off for a minute or two. As a, as a standard operating procedure here at the Buckeye Nest, I'm going to put uh, ABG antivirus. I've been putting it in uh, all my customers' computers for years. But frankly, I'm a little aggravated at ABG because they do put out a good product. And I'm what's called an uh, affiliate publisher. And they turned me down to uh, publicize and publish their, their software for them. But they do, do a good, put out a good product and it does work well with Microsoft Security Essentials. So I'll put that in this machine for antivirus. I'll install Microsoft Security Essentials. Then I'm going to put another uh, program in here called SpyBot Search and Destroy. Now what that program does is it, it keeps your... Uh, computer free of uh, uh, identity theft issues so somebody's trying to steal your social security number or anything you may have stored on this computer in the future it protects them from getting it protects you and keeps them from getting into those areas where it may get that information from you uh, it is free there is no subscription for it however if you send the uh, programmer a donation he will send you via email a special code that unlocks it so you can set it up to run automatically. AVG, the free version, will run automatically and you do have some very simple controls over it but uh, you can then buy an upgraded version of AVG if you want to but that is free also. Then the third program I put in here for you is called Glary Utilities. It is also free and what it does is it goes in and cleans up the messes that uh, SpyBot Search and Destroy and AVG finds after they wipe those out. So it cr uh, cleans up shortcut problems and startup problems and uh, d deletes uh, unnecessary temporary files and uh, checks your registry for errors and, and fixes those problems, etc., etc., that program is free also, but if you send the programmer a, a small donation, he will send you a code that you can unlock all the automatic functions on it too. And all three of those programs, AVG, Antivirus, SpyBot Search and Destroy, and Glary Utilities, uh, work real well with Microsoft Security Essentials, and I set those up on your computer so you're protected from that point on.